Parker Anything are a 14.5 billion dollar corporation and today I'm going to go and speak with Lloyd Cooper about their latest investments. Lloyd, Parker Hannafin globally has a turnover of 14 and a half billion. Um, tell us about the site in Sheffield and the kind of work you do here. So Sheffield, uh, we do the best of bell cryogenic valve range. Um, so in terms of the, the products we manufacture, it's really, really high in diversity. So we're a really high mix, low volume sort of business. In terms of part numbers, we probably offer about 20,000 part numbers on the top level. So it's really a high mixture of what we, we do. You know, it's, um, pro customers can really decide what product they want and our USP is very much to service their requests. So part of that offering uh, requires a lot of demand on our machine shop um, in terms of setups because we might be running a three off and a four off before we have to move to the next product. Um, so, you know, wh where we have been up to now is to incur an awful lot of setup. When I joined the business, we've really looked at the ratios from set to run. And, you know, we could be incurring three quarters of an hour of set for maybe a 10 and 15 minute cycle time. So th the numbers just didn't stack up. Park has got a real heavy focus on lean manufacturing, you know, and I think everybody's aware if you're cutting metal, you're making money. Um, and it really lent it, uh, itself towards heavy investment in, in machining capabilities. I think from an uh, investment point of view, it actually makes us more viable from a UK manufacturing uh, perspective. We, we've seen a lot of competition from low cost countries, um, but with heavy investment and, you know, and uh, selectively good investment and um, you know we can keep our manufacturing costs low while still maintaining a really high product quality. So tell me about some of your latest investments and solutions to cope with the low volume iMix components that you manufacture. So Park has invested about $500,000 um, in the Sheffield site so we've really gone to town on an automation cell. So what we looked at is we've um, especially from a set point of view we were incurring a lot of sets in our in our turning cells. So we've got three older machines that I think they were fully depreciated before I was born. Um, so what we've looked to do is obsolete all three of those into one comprehensive machining cell. So we've gone with the DMG NLX2000 um, CNC lathe, um, but really we've looked at what from a cradle to grave perspective, how we can make that um, a proper cell. So we've had the addition of an ABB flex loader robot, so we can do unmanned uh, loading and unloading and deburr and, and uh, clean down. Uh, we've got bar feeder on there so we can keep that uh, running for a long time but really really most crucially uh, we've got the Heimbuck ch um, ch chuck solution on there um, and what that's allowed us to do because of the high mix profile of the business we're able to switch from let's say collet size to collet size in 30 seconds go from a collet to a jaw module in two to three minutes whereas previously this might have been three quarters of an hour it is a night and day difference um, in our ability to keep that machine running um, and to the point you know it could be looked as quite a pricey investment, investment at $500,000, but when we're talking about the savings of inefficiency we're making, this is a sub two year payback. You know, and uh, we look at putting robots in and being afraid, let's say, of, of the complexity of it. It's been a very, very smooth process. And when you're talking a sub two year payback, it should be a formality for most UK manufacturing businesses. So, I mean, there, there is an argument to say that you get more profitability out of automating lower volume work than you do higher volume work. Would you agree with that? 100%. Um, you know, what we're, we're really trying to do at the moment is pass on those savings to our customers because we're actually able to do it 80, 90, or in some cases 100% quicker than our previous manufacturing methods. We can then pass that, um, some of those savings on to our customers, allowing our customers to become more competitive and we can still maintain the same broad offering we always have done out of Sheffield. So it's, it's been a real game changer, you know, in our customer success, and um, that's what we're striving for, but actually our ability to make a wide uh, range of products cheaply and efficiently. Now, with, with your latest investment and your latest solution, it's a real collaborative solution. You, you, like you mentioned, you've got the DMG Murray, the Hydrofeed Bar Feeder and the Heimbuck Work Holding. Some people may overlook uh, Work Holding as part of this solution when you talk about automation, how key has is, is the Heimbuck solution been to the complete uh, process? I think the, the Heimbuck um, like work holding has been probably the singular reason um, why we needed to do this. So what we wanted to spec was something that would compress down our setups because we were incurring every single hour many, many setups. 
the Heimbot did that with an off-the-shelf solution. There was n uh, no additional requirement for an engineering perspective because um, the quick change uh, aspect of it is, is, again, astounding the way you can change from uh, collet size to collet size in, in 30 seconds. I think the best we've had so far, we were running one, one si uh, size of bar, we changed to the next size up, changed the collet in 15 seconds flat. You know, so you, you can get your door open to door close times in as little as a minute and this is a real big game changer and that was the, one of the major considerations as part of this uh, investment was looking at the, the work holding and the way we can change from um, product A to product B. So it ultimately this is making you competitive globally, what are the next steps for Parker Hannafin in Sheffield? So really, uh, get much to the point, I said, we're really trying to make our uh, customers uh, very successful. The more competitive we can be, and it, uh, we can really expand our scope. So uh, we're putting more and more volume through this factory. Um, and you know, we're, we're going out and being winning business all over the globe. Um, really where I see it is, is probably another investment in a, in a machine or a robot on the other side. Uh, and then we're gonna look into five axis in the future. So I'm very, very keen for us to, to push the UK manufacturing, especially UK machine shops, um, and really expand upon that. And you know, we've got the technical prowess, we're now in a position with investment that we can do these things cheaply and efficiently.